Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this RedGamingTech.com video, as you probably guessed from the title, we're going to be taking a look at Intel's 10th generation processors, as well as unboxing Biostar's Z490 GTA Racing Motherboard, which of course is designed for the 10th generation series as well. So in this video, it will be an unboxing, as well as looking over some official Intel data for the next generation SKU. So that will include, of course, the specifications of the CPUs, the pricing, as well as some preliminary performance data from Intel themselves. Now, I'm going to say right off the bat, I do not recommend you pre-order or buy uh, anything based on the information of this video. This is just to apprise you of what Intel are planning for the next generation. However, you're going to have to wait until mid next month, so mid May, until uh, reviewers such as myself will be able to actually plunk up the reviews of the 10900K and its sisters and brothers. But with that said, um, I'm actually kind of interested what Intel are going to be doing with the next generation. Obviously, they're facing very stiff competition at the moment with AMD. But as I predicted a couple of months ago, what they're doing with the 10th generation SKUs is doubling down on them, uh, pushing the fact that they are the best processors, at least according to Intel themselves. Obviously, we'll have to independently verify that the best processors for gaming. And the 10900K can clock up to a rather staggering 5300 megahertz, which is kind of nuts. So this is not just Intel uh, cramming on an additional two processor cores and cranking up the clock frequency. There are some changes on the die itself, including the fact that it's a thinner interface material. We'll go into that in just a moment, which should help to reduce temperatures across the board. And there are some other enhancements as well to overclocking, which actually look pretty cool if you are more of an extreme overclocker. I have a feeling that these CPUs will be something that you will want to play with. With that said, though, I guess the first thing to do is to run down the specifications as well as the information of this uh, next generation lineup. So let's have a look at an overview of the specifications as well as features of the 10th generation. I want to reiterate, I do not recommend you pre-order anything until reviews are out and you can see yourself the performance of these upcoming parts. And just to really emphasize, I'm not able to preview performance in this video. This is kind of a first impressions and me going over the specifications with you. So, Intel are proud to make uh, you fully aware that this is the world's fast gaming processor, a claim, of course, we will be testing soon, up to 5300 megahertz as a clock frequency, which is quite frankly bonkers, 10 cores, 20 threads, and the 10900K will serve as the highest end SKU in the 10th generation lineup, um, up to 5300 megahertz with velocity boost, Turbo um, Boost Max technology free, that's a bit of a mouthful. Intel's hyper-threading technology goes across basically every single SKU in the 10th generation. I'll go into that in just a moment. Uh, once again, 10 cores, 20 threads, being the highest end SKU. 293300 MHz support for memory. There's also enhanced core and memory overclocking. Be very curious to test that out uh, in the not too distant future. And of course, this is going to be Intel's 400 series chipset, which is LGA1200. 2.5G Intel Ethernet connection, and also integrated Wi Fi 6 as well. As for the platform, we have 40 PCIe lanes. Thunderbolt 3 technology, Optane support technology, and there's also, of course, tuning support with performance maximizer, extreme uh, tuning utility, and so on. I am not going to run through every one of these SKUs, because I will be here until uh, probably Christmas, but um, the 10900K, as I've mentioned like 200 times now, is the highest end SKU. The base frequency is 3.7 GHz, the uh, turbo frequency, t turbo max free frequency, excuse me, is 5.2 gigahertz, but with velocity boost, it can be up to 5300 megahertz. I'm going to be most curious what is possible to squeeze out of these things with overclocking and also what the temperatures will be like. 10 cores, 20 threads, 125 watt TDP, but we all know about TDP. It is, of course, a fully unlocked SKU, once again, with 40 PCIe lanes, and the integrated graphics is UHD Graphics 630. 
The interesting thing here, though, is that the cost of this is just 488 US dollars, which I actually think is around the best case scenario that I kind of expected for these chips. I'd kind of figured around 450 to 500 is going to be like the upper end of what Intel could actually charge for the 10th generation, given what competition they're facing from AMD, so I don't think that's too bad at all. The 10700K, meanwhile, is up to 5.1 gigahertz and is an 8-core, 16-thread part. You can essentially say it's a tweaked variant in some ways of the 9900K, and it's going to set you back 374 US dollars. And the last SKU that I'll discuss in this video is the 10600K. It is a 6-core, 12-thread part, so you can essentially think of it as a higher clock to 8700k and this sucker is going to cost you around 262 US dollars so of course it could be a little bit higher once again with any of these prices when you take into account uh, well you know retailers gouging and of course putting asking for their pound of flesh in the marketing materials provided intel have also said that the new new overclocking enhancements, excuse me, include per core hyperthreading enable and disable. We also have various voltage and frequency controls, which is definitely nice. It seems that Intel are improving things a little bit from within Windows overclocking. And also graphical enhancements and new feature support. Obviously, not all of the features are. Uh, um, extensively uh, kind of detailed there and there's also a change to the uh, thermal interface material as well they're now using thin die stim which apparently improves thermal performance which as you can probably imagine given the fact that we are looking at 10 cores running at up to 5.3 gigahertz assuming you can hit that with all cores anyway if you're overclocking I imagine that that is going to be very important so now we've got familiar with the specifications of the processors, let's have a quick look at the performance data from Intel themselves. We'll go over the configuration in just a moment. Intel are naturally pushing the fact that frequency is important. Uh, 5.3 gigahertz, once again, is emblazoned as one of the bullet points. Games and applications continue to depend on high frequency cores, and around 60% of games are optimized for single core, and better performance required to drive high frame rates, foundational element of achieving lower latency. This is, of course, definitely true. Uh, a lot of high refresh rate gamers still do push towards the ninth generation SKUs. So I will be curious to do some independent testing on that to see how it does compare against the uh, 9900K and also a couple of older processors as well as uh, some AMD CPUs. Completely coincidentally, um, I actually got a knock at my door yesterday and it was MSI delivering a 165Hz 1440p monitor. Uh, it was completely unplanned. I was actually in the middle of doing photography for the uh, Biostar board and um, yeah, they basically just sent it because of the world events. They managed to get into the office and just randomly sent over a monitor, which is pretty damn cool. Uh, unexpected, but I'll take advantage of it, and maybe we can do some. Maybe we can do some kind of ultimate 1440p build featuring an RTX 2080 Ti. That would be kind of fun, I think. Anyway, uh, getting onto the performance data itself: elite real-world performance gaming and creating. Uh, Intel are comparing it against the previous generation, which of course would be a 9900K and also a three-year-old PC, which is a 7700K. Uh, I would be curious to test out uh, Adobe Premiere, given, of course, not only does it have the core count advantage, but higher clock frequency as well with the 10900K. Uh, obviously, the um, Adobe After Effects, Premiere, and so on also take advantage of your GPU, your iGPU, your discrete GPU, to kind of offload some work. So... I'd be curious to disable that and just let the CPU kind of do its thing and also have like a um, and also have the GPU kind of help out. So uh, stick with me if you want that information, uh, as well as uh, various titles. As you can probably tell, a lot of these games definitely do leverage high performance CPUs. Um, once again, I would be curious in the next couple of years with DirectX 12 and Vulkan becoming more normal in uh, games development, but I still think that ultimately like a high-performance CPU is going to be paramount to really push high performance uh, to like your screen. But 
which approach is better, whether it's AMD or Intel's, uh, with obviously uh, AMD having the core count advantage, Intel having just ridiculous clock frequency. That, of course, we will have to test uh, in the future. Anyway, Intel have also pushed a couple of titles, which they are um, using as examples of why high-performance CPUs are so important now, and I 100% agree with that. i uh, said this many times with the current generation consoles that PCs, of course, are going to have to kind of step up things that they've traditionally been able to kind of skimp on, like with the lower-end CPU, you can kind of throw in with a high-end GPU. I think that the requirements for CPU RAM and also SSDs is going to probably become uh, of greater importance over the next couple of years because of developers optimizing for the next generation consoles. Intel also provided performance disclaimers, which I definitely like to see. They've been pretty robust, actually, with these performance disclaimers, better, actually, than in the past, so I'm really appreciative of that. Uh, they've provided not only the full configuration, but also the testing conditions. Uh, I immediately draw my attention to the 3950X, because one way you can easily gimp AMD processors, as you know, is to, like, pair them with slow-ass RAM, but no, they uh, use 32 gigabytes of DDR4 running at 3200 megahertz. Well, one of the reasons you clicked on this video is because of the unboxing, so of course that's the next thing we're going to do. Let's crack this bad boy open and see what the racing Z490 GTA has to offer. Well, let's have a look at the unboxing, shall we? Because I suspect that's why most of you are here. Well, it's a box. Biostar's Racing Z490 GTA is not the first racing board that we have reviewed on the channel, although the previous ones have been AMD. They've had a pretty good build quality and have been very solid overall, at least in my experience. This is, of course, designed for the 10th generation. At the rear, you can see several of the board's features. We'll go more into those in just a moment, but it's a 14-phase design. I'm actually looking for clarification on that at the moment. I've not done teardown of the uh, motherboard, so I can't uh, offer any more insight into that. So, for now, I'm just going to take their word for the 14 phases. Um, and anyway, I guess we should crack this sucker open. And I'm totally not recording this audio separate to the unboxing. It's totally 100% at the same time, I can assure you. Maybe maybe not 100% at the same time. Um, anyway, let's just set the motherboard over there, because that's the part everyone cares about. But we'll look inside the box first. Um, and we'll also throw that over as well. There is very little inside the box itself, to be honest with you. You're looking at several SATA cables, a motherboard manual, and, well, a driver's CD. The motherboard manual is pretty thick. The pages are actually really uh, high quality. Uh, the printing is pretty damn good as well. So it's pretty expansive, as you would expect for a motherboard manual. You can see a diagram of the motherboard as well. So everything you need to kind of get up and running with the uh, installation of the board. But I suspect for kind of more power users, you probably won't need much of this at all. You'll probably just glance at it for a second. So we'll put that back down. Um, yep. Yeah. SATA cables for those who uh, are running like mechanical drives for storage of games or, you know, uh, SATA SSDs. I'm shaking it with rage. And uh, one driver CD, which, of course, I'm sure everyone will use and certainly will not download the drivers just from the internet. Uh, but, hey, at the very least, you can look at it that they're giving you a free drinks coaster. So I think that's pretty cool. You can use it as a um, Z490 drinks coaster. So, yeah, that's a driver CD. So what about I.O. on the board? Well, the rear of the board has two PS2 ports, one for mouse, one for keyboard. The HDMI port and display port that you've come to know and expect. Wi-Fi antenna support. A VGA port. Four USB 3.2s. Uh, these are Gen 1s. A LAN port, which is Intel i219V, which supports 1000 megabytes per second. And we also have, of course, two USB 2 ports. And finally, the obligatory three audio connectors as well, which use ALC1150. Other than that, I think the board looks kind of pretty. It's uh, not exactly colourful, but I think that this kind of colour scheme... Uh, dark grey blacks with a few white accents 
uh, pretty much will fit in with just about any color scheme. Uh, once again, the socket itself is LGA1200, but it also means that uh, if you do have an existing cooler, it will fit just fine on this board, assuming, of course, the cooler is uh, enough to support um, like a 10-core, 20-thread processor, because obviously it will be generating quite a bit of heat. So if it's a weedy cooler, you may be best to uh, upgrade anyway. And other than that, yeah, the board itself, in my opinion, looks kind of pretty. It's not um, anything that... Uh, there's support on the board for up to 128 gigabytes of DDR4 memory. Uh, Comet Lake officially supports 2933, but with this Biostar board, it can run over 4000 megahertz overclocked, which is obviously pretty damn insane. There are two PCIe... 3.0 ports which run in times 16 and there's also another three additional ones which are PCIe 3 but only times 1 and also uh, two uh, M.2 ports which uh, of course allow NVMe drives to be connected as well and other than that yeah um, I look forward to actually doing a full review of this board but I think there's one more thing we need to do Yep, that's right, we need to peel it. <laughs> that was actually pretty damn satisfying to do. And we've got one last one to peel. Oh, and in case you're wondering, there is foam under the board, so don't worry, I'm not scratching everything to hell underneath. And uh, yeah, so let's peel this one off as well. Yep, much better, much better. I want to make it abundantly clear this video is not sponsored content. Uh, Intel, Biostar, or indeed any of the other vendors that will be sending me motherboards for the 10th generation launch are not uh, sponsoring this content at all. No money has exchanged hands. All opinions are my own. And thus, I would encourage you to wait until our reviewers have actually, well, tested out the hardware to know whether you want to purchase it or not. The CPU landscape has... Let's just be really honest, it's shifted immeasurably over the past few years, not just because Intel's mainstream core count has cranked up significantly, but this is of course because of pressure from AMD themselves. And who knows what the hell the next couple of years will bring uh, in terms of CPU performance. And I think CPUs have kind of taken the back burner, uh, at least in terms of game performance, because of obviously the previous generation consoles like the Xbox One and PlayStation 4 had quite frankly not exactly great processors. But as we all know by now, the next generation Xbox, the next generation PlayStation have significantly more CPU grunt. So I suspect this will translate in demands for next generation games. We've kind of seen that already with, uh, I guess, a preview with Microsoft Flight Simulator. And I suspect over the next couple of years, this is going to become more prevalent in the demands of games. And obviously, GPU uh, requirements will obviously continue to shift upwards as well. And we've discussed SSD technology for the PC like two billion times by now. Either way, I am very interested to see what Intel will bring to the table with the 10th generation launch. But uh, obviously for now, that's all I can tell you guys about the 10th generation processes. Hopefully though, you have found the video informative and enjoyable. If you did, then <laughs> you know what to do. Click the uh, like button, subscribe to the channel if you uh, want more of this content. And I will hopefully see you soon. Take care of yourselves, have an amazing day. Bye for now.